Good evening, everyone. It is September the 16th, 2024. It's been somewhat of a, a bit more of a busier weekend. That's uh, some more information um, is has been coming in, uh, which I wish to share as well. And um, one of the things that came in uh, just prior to the weekend uh, was that um, uh, we've talked a little bit about it before in the video about, of course, on the uh, where people are getting the um, thrown out of their buildings and uh, no, no place to live because uh, <laughs> the rent thing where everybody wants to uh, rent evictions come in and here again and uh, like I said there's uh, like 300 people right now on that uh, list that may be actually out of uh, places I don't not too sure if I talked about it that much but it is concerning that people are involved in that and uh, I worry about how many more people are going to end up on the streets. So I'm looking forward to more updates as well. Um, because I know that this came in from uh, Halifax, I believe. And uh, one of the um, homeless encampments there, uh, there was some kind of a violence occurred. And the police went in and f found guns due to, the, uh, due to the violence and stuff. So now they're um, thinking of uh, moving in a way because this is also uh, close to the uh, injection site as well so here we have more in violence again around the injection site so now they're trying to move this encampment away from the uh, uh, definitely injection sites and I think I believe someone I think got shot again which um, there's another shooting again here not in lower town but in center town here just uh, I guess it was uh, early this morning whatever and uh, of course and then two days earlier we had another shooting so it's on the increase so i know we're gonna have to do something um and this is one of the things that i wanted to also talk about was um, i also wanted to mention that um when i've talked about on my other video about what they're um on the injection sites and getting them uh away from the schools and the, and the daycares and that i want to explain something why I'm all for this giving a buffer zone for our children because uh, before the pandemic a few years before the pandemic <clears throat> there was uh, a scare people found out that ironically they had managed to sneak in a probation officer office pardon me not an officer but a probation office I should say right across the street from a public school and all the different characters that were going in and out of that probation office at the time and you have all kinds of uh, criminals uh, who've done all kinds of offenses and you certainly have to worry about the you know, the sexual predators and I'm sure that they must have restrictions on them these people cannot be uh, for various reasons those that have restrictions that say you can't be uh, near children and uh, what a perfect excuse to get near children and watch children when sorry but I gotta go see my probation officer and I can't help it if he's right across the, um, the street from a school. So that was kind of abandoned, thankfully. Enough ruckus was caused over that. And this is what I'm seeing today about the um, situation with the injection sites. And for those, I understand their points too. They're valid points, no doubt about it. They're trying to save lives. But where's the priority here? Our children should always be the priority. And if moving the site is that uh, is that important, then you move the site. It's as simple as that. So I also see the situation where they keep one of the reasons they say, well, we have to be where the, the problem is. And um, I know we have problems. They're around the school, but schools and that. But we don't need our children seeing this any closer than necessary. And for those who are actually running the, the uh, sites, please, where is your priorities? Our children should come first, you know, and it should be a matter of, well, you know, it's too far. Our clients can't go to it. Well, uh, something just happened that I'm going to mention as well today, or was, uh, yeah, it was or my, uh, on the news, pardon me, yesterday, that British Columbia is trying a new one, that um, sooner or later it was go it's going to come to a head, and, um, they just talk, we're, are now talking about involuntary um, putting people in uh, a place or maybe not exactly an institution, 
but a place where they can get help for their um, addictions and stuff uh, because um, they're not able to look after themselves they're causing so much trouble and hopefully they can get them back up and running and that was what I was going to suggest that um, something along that line that we need a place to put these people and they spoke up even before I got a chance to speak up which is interesting and as for the protection of all of us or certainly our children uh, they shouldn't have to see it um, they're scared stiff um, even with the wars that are going right on now with Ukraine and what's happening between Palestine and Israel right now uh, and they're hearing about the schools and the synagogues and all this having bomb threats so the children are bombarded by all this so it's no wonder that they're scared so this is why I believe that yes we should have a buffer zone around our schools and our daycares so it's less likely not to say it is not going to happen but it's a lot less likelier to happen if they're not near the situation and um, one of the things that I've seen that's um, uh, I want to tell you what happened to me on on Friday I was I'd gone into Dollarama and it was uh, just to pick up a couple of things and of course because of my arthritis and my mobility issues um, if I'm not walking with my service dog Heidi I walk with a cane so I gone into uh, Dollarama with my cane today or that day and um, I went to come out of the store so I'm coming up to the door and I'm wait and I'm gonna press a button for the automatic door to open for me no problem but the automatic door was like you had the door here and then you had like another pane of glass and then the the button for the door was just past the other pane of glass so I had to move over just to go press the button so I moved over pressed the button went to move back to get back in the door that was now opening when this woman came rushing by me practically ran me over I um, startled I saw she was in really ragged clothes and then I see all this stuff in her arms says oh no not another robbery and within two seconds after I ended up accidentally blocking the door because I couldn't with my knees and the arthritis I can't move fast enough to get out of the road so the security from the Dollarama came barging behind me and he almost ran me over and then he's taking off after the girl and of course he can't catch up to her but the interesting thing is you want to talk about repeat um, offenders he kept repeating this girl's name she's obviously a repeat offender they know who she is she comes into the store and steals so this is another thing that I've seen and I'm going to maybe make a little bit longer video tonight because I also wanted to bring up what I've seen uh, just came, uh, came up it was uh, very interesting they are now talking about um, law laws and um, security measures but they're going to they're putting up a pilot project now since looking at the receipts did not work um, to see if you bought everything they're they're now and their employees are being attacked in that so they've come up with the idea that they're going to put body cams on their employees now for, for this which is going to be a very interesting experiment uh, because of all the violence and stuff that's taking taking place and of course it's not good enough to have the security cameras in the store anymore um, because it, it's much better to get a close-up and because they're modeling it now because the police have got body cams um, as well and they're having a successful rate with that uh, and so what they're thinking is this is going to be successful and for that matter it was um, a retired commissioner from the OPP who came on and was talking about that as well thinking that may not be a bad idea and then I'm thinking well if that's not a bad idea with all of us running around seeing what's going on here to get things under control maybe we all should be running around with body cams on us so the police or everybody else we actually can record it because we yes we record we have to go into our pocket or whatever for our cell phones to record things but this has been kind of an interesting weekend uh, with the, the information that's coming out so I just wanted to sort of bring everybody up to date and again I don't want to make it too long but uh, I should be back hopefully with some more news shortly uh, like I said I'm looking for updates to see where things are after the summer and see where the city and people are now that the governments and everybody's coming back this week to work completely so hopefully I get something soon again but I just want to update you where we were at the moment uh, from what all the CTV news is, is uh, giving us right now 
and those wonderful reporters i can't thank them enough to help with the channel too to help uh, report things to people and uh help me be able to report some of this as well so everyone take care have a nice day be safe and we'll talk again soon and bye bye